Welcome back, and this is your second recorded session in your CDOT Dialogue training. And this section will be pretty short. We're just going to talk about working with cases. Uh, in our last session, we talked a little bit about where you can find them in your queues, how you can accept them, and this one we're going to focus really more on creating new cases. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so creating a new case um, when you are creating a new case in dialogue, or in dialogue, usually that's because you have somebody on the phone who's called in, and in rare cases, you may even have a walk-in. So we are going to create a new case, uh, and we call this the CS case, or the customer service type case. There are a couple of other types, such as the major event and the project cases, but we'll explore those in a different time. Uh, we'll talk about linking or associating a new or existing contact. And then we will just talk through some of the definitions of the fields that you'll be filling out. We'll talk how you save records and how you make changes to records and how you can change statuses. We'll also show you how to view the case detail and the related list. We'll probably review that because I think we went through that briefly before. And then we'll just take a quick look at the tabs and buttons on the cases. Again, if you're following through in your packet of job aids, you can look at pages four and five, and that will walk you through the step-by-step -step procedures. So let's go into Salesforce and take a look at doing these, some of these things. So as we explored in our first session, once we've logged into Salesforce, it will take us into our cases. Uh, when we uh, first get in in the morning, we may wish to look at some of our list views, which are like our regional queue. We may want to look at our regional queue and see what's coming in. We might want to look at open cases that we already have working and begin to work on those cases. Well, let's just say that a phone call comes in and I click new CS case. So this is new customer service case. And I think we will start creating a new case. So here, let's say that, let's use the example that we had somebody who gave us a call and let us know that there was a traffic signal that was out at, on Highway 119 at Highway 52, so on that diagonal highway there in between Boulder and Longmont, and it was they were going uh, southbound, and it was causing some um, delays. So the first thing that we might do is ask the caller if they would mind giving us their contact information. So it is required to have contact information, and let's just say that we have uh, – uh, a contact, her name is Trisha Bennett. This is easy because I've already got one of these. But I can click this magnifying glass, or I need to click this magnifying glass, actually, to look up and make sure that this contact exists. So let's just double cl or click this one. And in this case, I've got multiple contacts because I have been testing in dialog for quite some time. But also notice that I can click New. See where that says New right there? If I didn't have three contact um, options that work here, I could just simply click the new tab. And from there, I could put in customer information. So um, I can create a new first name, last name, email. Uh, and I recommend the only thing that's required here is the last name. But uh, let's do put in if you can get it from your customer email and or phone number, especially uh, email or phone number, especially if they are looking to have a contact back if they wanted to be us to contact them again. Um, we need to have a way to do that. So um, there will also be a look up here for an anonymous contact. So every now and then you'll have somebody who just, you know, alerts you of something but doesn't give them their name or somebody who, um, you know, really you just, you just it, maybe they hung up but you got the gist of it. So there will be a an anonymous contact option in your lookup field. So just to create, um, if you do decide that you're going to create a new uh, contact, then you're going to want to fill out um, first name, last name, if you can get it. Last name is the only thing that's required. Uh, you can put in their email address, and then the phone number is down here. Uh, and then after you've, you don't necessarily need to put in all the mailing information if you don't have it. Um, but the phone number and email address are really helpful. And then be sure to scroll down. See this scroll bar here? you'll want to scroll down to the bottom and choose save in order to create your new contact. If you don't choose save, then it won't stick and you'll end up getting an error message. But for me, I'm gonna go ahead and select this person because she already exists in our dialogue system. And let's say that she does not want a response. She just wants to let us know that it's out. 
Um, but she did give us um, her email or her phone number information. So if we needed to call her back for any reason, she gave us a phone number. It's a high priority case really because it's backing up traffic on a highway and we do not need to follow up with our constituents. So this follow up with constituent button is kind of nice because when you check it, uh, Dialog will send you an alert in 72 hours and say, hey, by the way, you wanted us to follow up with you. You wanna follow up with your constituents. So here's the case number, here's the link. And so you'll get an alert in your Gmail inbox that says, hey, follow up with your constituent or your con this constituent as a reminder. As we scroll down, you'll see the case description really simple fields there's a date of occurrence and you can simply click this box in fact i recommend that this is the right this is a good way to start because this will give you a timestamp of um, when the date of the occurrence occurred sometimes if somebody's calling later to something that they observed earlier then you can update the date or you can update the time but uh, dialogue will require this format so uh, it's my recommendation that you always start by clicking this underlined link case category in this case, this is going to be a traffic category, but notice all of the different categories that you have available to you. So commercial vehicles, construction closures, records requests, driver license, express lanes, federal, Department of Transportation, permits, road conditions, transit, all of those different types of options. In this case, we're going to choose traffic because it's a traffic signal. When you choose a case category, this gives us a, a new, or um, appropriate types of issues that are associated with that category. So when I mouse over this little eye, it tells me that the issue types are dependent on the category that we just chose. So since we chose traffic, now it's going to say, okay, so what kind of an issue is it? Is it a compliment? Is it a safety concern? Does it have to do with signals? Does it have to do with speed limits? I'm gonna stick with signals. This uh, case came in over the phone and I am going to create a subject that says malfunctioning traffic signal at highway 119 and 52. Caller reports uh, traffic light out at intersection of highway 119 and 52 in the southbound direction. Traffic backups are occurring at this rather busy intersection. And um, incident location, when you, if you needed to share this with a subject matter expert that might help you to fix this traffic signal, you might want to put other information in here. So this is, would be maybe where you wanted to have a mile marker or a cross street. I already put that in the issue details, and um, I think that people will be reading those issue details. But if you want to, you could put uh, uh, Highway 119 in 52 southbound or something like that uh, and that would be region four although we're going to have our region down here so we, that would be overkill then down here um well actually let's go over to the right there's a status that your case has when you first bring it in it's new and then when you close it it will get a status of close which doesn't even show here but every now and then you'll have something that needs to be escalated certainly if we had uh, something that might be requiring media attention or something where you have a client that wants to escalate um, a case um, and that way a supervisor or a communications manager might be able to contact that person. Uh, sometimes you'll have a, a case that you want to that's on hold for a little while because maybe you're waiting for a response from a customer or something um, and then you have cases that are in progress. So you can change this status if you want to to in progress. Oftentimes we have what we call a, one, a first call resolution and it will just stay in new and then we'll close the call. This is going to be a good example of that sort of a case. You have the ability to associate cases with other cases in, ca this, in this situation that's not necessary, but um, you might have, uh, let's say, it could be a major event issue, um, but maybe you were having a traffic um, closures because of a sporting event um, and there was 
something that occurred as a result of the traffic cones or something, and so you related the cases together so that you could um, create that relationship within Dialog. Uh, case resolution will fill in when we do cases or a case closure here shortly. If something's a legal issue, uh, we want you to check that box, and then uh, anything that is a legal issue should be forwarded directly to our Cora um, queue. And also, um, you may want to alert your CS communications manager or the customer service manager that this occurred, and you will probably transfer that case to one of those people, and I'll show you how to do that in one of these upcoming sessions. Legal issue, um, that would be the checkbox that you would choose. Confidential, if something's confidential, let's say that you have a um, an issue that comes in involving one of your CDOT colleagues who might be a truck driver, might be something that could fall under the HR umbrella, you would want to mark that as confidential. And again, you would want to forward that issue to a centralized or the customer service manager, centralized resource or customer service manager. In this case, we'll go to the incident location information. Here, we're going to choose the region. This one happens to be in region four. And this is likely going to involve a subject matter expert who's traffic. Uh, when subject matter experts become dialog users, they will also be able to, you'll share cases with them, and they'll be able to see them as well. And we'll talk about how to do that later in these recorded sessions. In this case, we're also identifying the county. And in some cases, you need to specify more um, specifically the route, the area, and the patrol. In this case, I believe that our issue details probably and our incident location probably identify the location fairly thoroughly. Uh, when we start working with contractors, we are going to specify the project and we'll also identify people who are the responsible party within the contractor. Those options will exist. And sometimes our resolutions, such as the need to uh, correct a compromised um, uh, traffic equipment, uh, that we may end up needing to have a work order associated with that. So if you, there is a work order required, you can just check that box and you can put in some work order notes. But remember that when we close a case, that's because we've satisfied the customer requirement. So in this case, we can thank somebody for our alert and we can ask them if they want us to follow up with them later. In this case, they said no. So I can just save my case or I could choose save and close. And if I choose to save and close my case, it will take me directly to the closure, ask me to put in some re resolution comments, how did you resolve it, ask me to specify whether or not there is a, this was a first call resolution. Um, I'm going to just go ahead and choose save for now so we can demonstrate a couple of other things. But that is how you create a new case. So now that I created this, I have a case number because I just chose save and I don't get the case number assigned until I chose save. And then after I have saved my case as well, um, the knowledge pane, this pane here, this is your orange pages pane on the right side, tries to find out whether or not there are um, any art knowledge articles available. In this case, we just had a driver alert us of a, magnet, a malfunctioning traffic signal. There's really no orange page article that is, has been put in here right now to describe this. Um, but just know that you can look at different knowledge articles here as well. Then um, from here, let's just show you that once I've created a case, and this is my case, now if I go back, again, I'm in my cases, and I go back to my, my open cases, it will remember wherever you left off. I have a new case that's in my queue, and here's my malfunctioning traffic. And I own this. This is in my queue because I created it. So the cases that you'll see here are my those that you create or those that you have accepted from the queue. And uh, if you need to forward this case to another place, then you can simply click the transfer case button. But we're going to talk about transferring and sharing and all that other good stuff in another section. So let's go back and see where we're at. We've gone through creating a case, creating a new or existing contact. We went through all the review and the definition of the fields, and we talked through saving. So let's take a quick look at editing and case detail in the related list. Um, so now that we've created our case, 
we have our case detail. So this is going to be an important place for you to remember because when you're looking at a case, you can be in case details, you can be writing email and answer customers, you can be writing case notes and alerting subject matter experts or other members of your team, and you can also be logging calls. So if you're looking here and wanting to go back to that original case detail, the case that you created, you can kind of tell because there's gold bars here, then you're going to want to go to the, all the way to the left and, and view the case details. If I need to make changes to these details, let's say that I just found something else new that I wanted to update, um, then I can choose Edit Case. And when I choose Edit, it takes me back into the case and it allows me to make some changes. Um, and I think maybe we'll say that there is a, now we probably may, may or may not need a work order there, but um, if we wanted to, we could update this case. Maybe one if we changed our mind and decided that we wanted to follow up with the constituent. And then we can just simply choose save again in order to apply those changes. Okay. Uh, I, that, that one pretty much does it. You also, you probably won't have the option to delete a case, but you can close a case, you can share a case with another, you can accept a case from here. If you just got this one and viewed it out of the queue, you can choose edit to make changes to the case. And if you need to transfer this, as in the case of a legal issue or a confidential issue or something that should be forwarded to HQ or Cora, then you would use the case transfer button. And we'll talk about how to do that before too long. Uh, and across the tab, we, we talked about the tabs across the top, and then as you scroll down, after you've emailed customers or jotted down some notes or attached knowledge articles, if that's appropriate, down here, you'll see that this will be adding. So we might have some case comments, we might have some activity history like emails that we've sent, we might be able to see emails that we've sent, we might see logged calls, those would also go into activity history if it were a major event. If there were attachments like images or something that we wanted to attach to this, we might see them here. And then any related cases uh, we could attach as well. And if any articles are relevant, we could see any articles that we have attached. And we'll talk about Orange Pages articles too very shortly. All right, so that was creating cases. So now I will encourage you guys, I will, uh, as we prepare to go into the next um, section of this, to create a new case. And I gave you the scenario on screen as well. And so why don't you do that if you have a chance? And um, here are the step-by-step -step, uh, instructions, just as reminders. And you can certainly refer to the materials and job aid packet that you have as well. So the next section, that we are going to record and revisit are going to be how do you use that email tab? How do you answer customers using email? And how do you attach those Orange Pages articles when they're relevant in order to answer the customer? So stick with me and we'll be back for another session. Thank you.